Hello there, and today we'll be making a brand new computer. Well, brand new to me since most of the parts are used in one sense of the word or another. Um, most interesting component we have here is this motherboard, which I just got from AliExpress. So this shipped all the way from China, and there's uh, something interesting about it and how it's made and what it does. So let's get to unboxing this, and I'll go over what this is and what I'm going to use it for. Alrighty, let's get started opening this up off camera and cut a little slice in here so you can see that before filming I have not opened this yet so we're going to experience that together let's get the outer packaging off here and cut through all this bubble wrap or at least the tape here and here Unwrap it, unwrap it, unwrap it some more, and we get a glimpse of our new motherboard. This is interestingly packed. But at least I know that it got here safely. There we go. Let's get all the packaging out of there. So as you may be able to see from this box, this claims to be a X99 motherboard. Um, X99 here, as I've researched about this board, is not necessarily the chipset that's on here, but the CPU socket that is on here. This is an LGA 2011 V3 socket, which in the consumer space was sold with the Intel X99 chipset, but in the server space, that would be a different um, chipset. I think it was like C610 or something like that, or 612. So actually what this is, this is salvaged old server chipset and salvaged old server parts made into a new consumer product. So what I'm doing is I have a Xeon processor so I can turn this into a little workstation. Let's get all the little pieces that come and place them here and see what we got. I have to say, for a product from AliExpress, this is actually really nicely set and really nicely done. So we have our IO shield, which I was afraid I wasn't going to get, but luckily we did. Um, some SATA cables, some sort of CPU cooler bracket. Don't know if I need this because my CPU cooler should have all the brackets it needs without needing this thing. Like we got some interesting screws and some thermal paste, but I'm going to use my own thermal paste. A manual, which presumably isn't in English, and it is not. And. A warranty card, presumably that three means three year warranty. I wonder if they'll actually, you know, respect that warranty. Hopefully this thing works. I don't need I don't need the warranty. Get the board out. So this is a hopefully a mini ITX sized board. It's got the LGA 2011 V3 socket there, two DDR4 RAM slots. The chipset, like I said, is probably not official X99. It's probably a Intel C612 or whatever the server variant is. Presumably salvaged from some old server boards and placed into this, and then resold. You know, recycled. So, hope this is a technically new motherboard but using presumably some recycled parts and some new parts. Interestingly you might notice there's no BIOS battery in here. I think the seller said there's some rule about shipping batteries from China to the US so I'm gonna have to install that on my own. We have one PCI Express X16 slot for our video card. We have an NVMe slot. We have uh, CPU fan header is here with the CPU fan header looks to have some bent pins on it. Hopefully if I bend them back the fan will just work and I won't have to worry about it. We luckily have another case fan header over there 
and yeah, this thing looks pretty good. So now let's go over all the other parts I have to put on this board, get it on a test bench, and see what happens. All right, alrighty. So now we have a collection of parts we're going to use with our board here. First off is our CPU. This is an Intel Xeon 4-core, 8-thread CPU. Interestingly, on eBay, old server components like this are generally fairly cheap, so I got this for a pretty good deal. This is Intel Xeon E5 1630v3. This is a actually really nice CPU. I got it for super cheap, and it should work with this board. So, first things first, let's put that in the board. I haven't used one of these sockets before, but it looks on it there are instructions about how to use it. So it says, first I unlock this side. Uh, okay. First unlock this bracket, then unlock this bracket. Open it up. Take out the protective plastic. Somehow. Spin it around. Okay. Take out our protective plastic over the socket. Get our CPU. To install these is pretty simple. On the CPU, on the bottom there, there's a little triangle. And then on our socket, there's also a little triangle. So you just line those up. With these, you just simply drop it in the socket. Very carefully drop it in the socket, that is. Just like that. Put the lid back on it. And then follow the instructions for how to lock it. It says to lock this side first, which is the opposite of the one that we opened first. So that goes in there. And this goes in here. And it looks like our CPU is installed. That's simple. Let's install our RAM next. So I'm an idiot and grab the wrong RAM out of the closet. So anyone knows what type of RAM that was, um, let me know. You may win a prize. Not really. So the real RAM here is DDR4 ECC memory. Each of these sticks is 8 gigs. So we have 16 gigs of RAM. Like I was saying before, since the memory controller on the Xeon supports ECC memory, might as well use it since this RAM seems to be a lot cheaper than the non-ECC variant. So one stick and two sticks. Good. Next you see our cooler here. This is a deep cool cooler. Um, so the CPU has a TDP of around 140 watts. And this cooler says for Intel CPUs it can cool up to 130 watts. Interestingly, for AMD CPUs, it has a different number. So, as you've probably seen in a lot of other videos, TDP on coolers and CPUs doesn't really mean a whole lot. So, I'm just hoping that this cooler could actually cool this CPU down. It's a pretty beefy cooler with a pretty big fan on it, so I'm not too worried. It should be fine. First thing we're going to do is clean off the thermal paste already on the cooler with this alcohol and then I'm going to put on some new thermal paste and put it on there. Alrighty, off camera I found the correct brackets for our cooler, put them on, and so let's get our thermal grease on our CPU and bolt this cooler down. Yeah, this cooler is probably a little large for this board, but I needed a large cooler for a CPU with a fairly large TDP like this one. Alright, let's get our Thermal grease put on. I don't know how much to put on these big CPUs, so hopefully just kind of like that should be enough. Since this is kind of a large CPU here, a large heat spreader on it, so that should probably be fine. Take our fan off of our cooler so we can actually screw down. Brackets and line it up. And screw it down. Wait, is this not the right brackets? Do these not line up? This might be difference between. Oh, whoops. Yeah, it's like I put the coolers on the brackets on the wrong direction. Since 2011 has two 
There's a square model and a narrow model, so I must have got those mixed up. Let me fix that. Alrighty, I think we're ready to test. I got our cooler on. It was just a matter of moving the little screws around on the cooler to line it up correctly. You can see, I don't know if you can really see this, but these little screws here, they sort of slide around a little bit in there. So they weren't perfectly lined up with the holes, but it looks like it's good now. So let's get our board on our test bench here and see if it powers on up. All right. Looks like I might need to move some of the standoffs over, but I don't know if I actually want to do that. I might just screw it on with just four out of the six standoffs. Um, no, this thing's pretty heavy with the cooler on it and the video on it. I think I need to move these two standoffs over. I'm gonna do that and get right back to you. Alrighty, our motherboard is screwed onto our test bench and looking through the manual, luckily the front panel headers for like the reset switch and the power switch, those are actually written in English. So hopefully that means I can actually connect them. As everyone knows, those are the worst things to connect on a computer, aren't they? So I guess you mostly only need our power switch really to connect the other ones, I suppose. So let's get our power switch right here. Our reset switch goes on top of that. Man, don't you just wish these were like, you know, standard? Alright, let's connect our power LEDs. Just might as well. And one more little plug gotta go in between the other ones. Okay. So hopefully that's our front panel connectors connected properly. I followed the manual, should be fine. Let's get our ATX power cable connected. Oh, and I did pop in a, a BIOS battery in case you were wondering. Let's get ATX power the board. Let's get our 8 pin CPU power connector also on the board. And once I grab my video card, we will be ready to go. Alright, so unless I did something horribly wrong, we have what should be a functional computer. The video card here is not our final video card, that is just a GTS 250 that I use for testing. Our final video card for this project is in a different system right now, and I will install it once I know that this all boots. So, now that it all plugged in and hooked up, let's switch over to the capture card and see what happens. Alright, pushing the power button, and here we go. Well, CPU fan is spinning. That is good. Let's see if we get a post. And we post. Look at that. Our system is working. Hopefully this supports proper EFI booting. I heard that on some of the older models of these boards, like the X79, they wouldn't totally boot properly with UAFI. This being an X99 newer model, hopefully it does. Um, as we can see, we have our full 16 gigs of RAM detected. I'll fix the clock later. And I guess I don't need to go through all of the things here, but CPU temperature is looking good. CPU fan is working fine. And there's a lot of stuff here that I don't know what it does. Lots of memory stuff. Oh, here we go. Interestingly, our BIOS here is saying processor 0, processor 1. I guess that this chipset may have been used for a dual socket system before it was repurposed for this one. Clearly, we only have a single socket here, but you can see the CPU is being detected properly. 
it is 3.7 gigahertz, it is 4 cores and 8 threads, and it is kind of an insane CPU. Let's see what else we got in these settings here. Um, I guess nothing terribly interesting to go through in these settings until I actually install something. So I guess I can see if I could actually boot from a, um, if I can net boot? I don't know if this will net boot. Let's just see if I can net boot. Maybe I can't net boot. Okay. Because it's just coming right back to here. Um, yeah, I guess I have to go through all of these settings and see if I can change one to make it net boot, or I guess I need to go get a flash drive and actually try to boot off something. But, at least we know that our system works. Um, I'm going to switch back out of the capture card, and in the next video, we will hopefully have something installed on this, and we can see what we can do with it. So now the big question about the system is, what do I want to do with it? Um, well, I bought this so I can Hackintosh it to just install Mac OS X on it. Why? Just kind of because I can. Um, on my old gaming machine, I had a triple boot setup with Windows, Mac, and Linux. Though on my new gaming desktop, I didn't install Mac because it's Ryzen. And you can install Mac on Ryzen, but I didn't want to deal with that. I do still have Windows and Linux on there, but what I wanted was a separate machine just for OS X. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, like, I mean, this will be a gaming machine, like, this could probably play games, but how many games are there for Mac? No, I'm kidding. Um, I don't know, I think it'd be cool to just have a Mac system, because I used to, and I just want to be able to mess with one again and be able to use one. Um, in the future, our video card will actually be a AMD RX 460, which I'm taking out of my old gaming machine. Um, I'll just grab a random hard drive I have lying around to install Mac to it. I may get NVMe drive, but I don't really see that anyone right now. In the future, I might do that. And yeah, I'm just really happy that this thing works. This motherboard, which is basically just salvaged old surfer parts thrown onto a board, this CPU and RAM, which I bought off of eBay, and it all comes together to work in what is probably overkill for just a, C a computer that I don't know what I'm going to do with, but this was really cheap. Um, maybe in the next video, when I actually have an OS on here, I'll go over the prices, but just know it was not much. You could find the Xeon and the ECC memory on eBay for, like, dirt cheap, and this motherboard came from AliExpress, which... The only downside is it takes a while to get here, but really it took, I think, like two, maybe three weeks to get here. Came here a lot faster than I thought, so, well, I'm really happy with this. And, well, on that note, I'm going to see you guys in the next video.